From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Welcome, my friends. Welcome. Here we are live. It is the 8th day of December, 2011, on this Thursday edition. I had the Austin police chief in studio with me yesterday, and I appreciate him having the courage to come in here and, and uh, get grilled. And when I brought up Fast and Furious, he, he said, well, yes, when it's killing police officers, it's probably not a very good idea, and, and I don't like it. We need stronger statements against Eric Holder and the Justice Department who've been caught perjuring themselves and who were caught shipping tens of thousands of guns directly to cartels in Mexico to knock out their competition and allow them to ship drugs into the United States. I told you about this back in February at PrisonPlanet.com. Paul Watson was the first to write on it out of federal filings and federal court cases where national security was declared in Sinaloa drug cartel cases in Chicago, Illinois, and El Paso, Texas. Months after that, the El Paso Times, Chicago Tribune had blurbs buried in just boring headlines about Sinaloa drug cases. It would, well, the U.S. government declared national security and did admit that they'd allowed cocaine to be brought in and did allow money to be laundered by Sinaloa. Fast and Furious was just one section of that. But the main caveat that is the, the key to it all, the cherry on top, was that it was clearly to blame the Second Amendment. Now, I've told all the journalists out there, if you go do the research, and we've done the newscast, we've written the reports ourselves, you can go get your Pulitzer Prize for it if you want. We told you two years ago that they were having stings on gun shows and staged events. We got documents leaked to us. They were using illegal aliens for that. They did it here in Austin. We blew the whistle on that, setting people up. They even had fake licenses. Somebody buys one in a private sale. They still throw the book at you. We went over all that here on air. And we also noticed that there were other speeches given by Eric Holder in Texas, in Arizona, and in other states where he said, we've got guns from the U.S. coming back in. We've got to ban assault weapons again and ban more than one firearm being sold and get licensing for everybody. And they talked about their gun tracking programs. That's how I knew when they got caught doing all this uh, in the first months of 2011 that they'd already been involved and he knew because there were the stinking press conferences. And we went and dug up the press conferences and played them here with the deputy attorney general, the attorney general, and Mr. Napolitano, I mean, Miss Napolitano, all of them. All of them. I mean, right there. Perjury. Perjury. And I said, you watch. They're going to go into Congress and tell us to stop trying to make political points. Bush was doing the same program. Because I knew about this program six years ago from Silly Castile and others. Former DEA agent. Because when they tried to recruit him to train Las Zetas near Kingsville at one of those big ranches. And I knew Sally, who they set up and put in prison, he's set to get out soon for selling somebody some shotguns at a gun show. I know he wasn't the guy that made stuff up, and we had other intel on that. So we were six years, or I guess technically about five years, because this is broken the last year or so. We were five years ahead of the curve as usual, because we live in the real world. Well, once you know the government's gun running, drug running, child kidnap running, sex slave running, factory slave running, you watch congressional hearings about it, nobody gets in trouble. Once you aren't naive anymore, you know what's going on. And, you know, I raised that because the police chief's in here, and I'm going, what about Fast and Furious? And, and he was doing the Sergeant Schultz thing of I know nothing, I know nothing. But he knows that's so big, he's like, by the way, that guy's real smart. He knows about all this stuff. He says he listens to the show. Of course he knows. And I, I quizzed him. He does listen a lot. But the point is that he said, well, that is too bad. No, it's not too bad. It's criminal. And it's a window into false flag. It's a window into government staging things. I cornered the police chief after the show, and I said, listen, here's this film about Oklahoma City. And I said, uh, you know, Eric Holder got caught. His emails got released in lawsuits where he was, you know, sending emails about covering up what really happened. And it's a D-Day emergency uh, for the Justice Department, job number one, to cover up what happened in Oklahoma City. Well, we know what 
the cover up was. The ATF went in there and blew that building up and set up their own military patsy who was involved with them. We got all the witnesses, the cops that saw it, the, the, the head of the HUD department who saw it, all of them, those they haven't killed. Okay, so, so when I sit here and tell somebody the government, criminal elements of it, bombed Oklahoma City, I'm not just saying that. When I tell you the government shipping guns into Mexico and drugs back in, I'm not just saying that. Okay, when I tell you they're going to implode the world market through derivatives and take over country by country, and I list which country they're going to go after first, and then the next and the next and the next, it's because it's all public if you will only open your eyeballs up. It'd be like if you looked over your neighbor's fence and it looked like they were putting a body bag in a hole they dug six feet long, six feet deep. And it looks like they're picking up a heavy body dropping. And then you say, oh, that couldn't be. I'm sure uh, they're just burying something else. No, if it looks like a body, it might not be. But you've got to go investigate. You got to go, hey, Fred, what are you burying there? Or you got to wait till Fred leaves town and go dig into there and find out. Or you've got to call the police. It's the same thing. Oh, I just don't want to believe that, Alex. Arde Saveda was telling me in the hall. That just couldn't be true. Couldn't be true. They've been caught red-handed. And it's the same with people all over this country. None of us, not, not, not Arde Saveda, not his family, not me, not my family, not Ron Paul. No one, no one, as Ron Paul said a few months ago in a debate, they were talking about secret arrest and killing of American citizens without warrants, anything. It's one thing to say, go out and get somebody dead or alive, they resist, kill them. But bring them back, and we want them to face trial. We want intelligence. You don't want trial or intelligence when you're involved in a fraud. And Ron Paul said, any of you could be next. Any of you politicians and media people, this can be used on you. And now they're saying it will be used against the general public. None of us are safe. Let me say it again. No one is safe. Horzine said, any minute to take... Uh, the stand before Congress, and he says he's going to take the fifth, that's in the Washington Post, and is going to say he doesn't know where the now $3 billion went. The head of the company doesn't know. That's what America's turned into. They take people's private accounts, they go gobble up and t buy companies, and then take people's private brokerage bank account. A lot of people have bank accounts in those and have credit cards on them. They take your money and then say, I don't know where it is. Listen, this is a trial balloon to see if they can get away with this. But you know what? Don't believe me. Just, just, just watch the next five phases come into place. So all of this comes out. I knew they were blaming the Second Amendment. I knew they were setting this up two years ago. I knew really six years ago, but I was sure two years ago, and I've been beating the drum ever since. And here it is. Confirmed. ATF plotted to use Fast and Furious to demonize Second Amendment. PrisonPlanet.com. Now, this went up yesterday afternoon. It's already scrolled off the main page. It's in the archive area. I think I'm going to ask Kirk to repost it in the main area. But uh, Paul Watson has this article. ATF created the problem so they could be the solution to it. That is a quote out of CBS News. Well, something weird's going on. CBS News had an article two days ago of why Ron Paul is right on 10 points. I'm st uh, well, what's going on here? I mean, has the mainstream media figured out they've lost all credibility, so they're desperately trying to get some of it back? I don't know. Or maybe even people in the power structure have figured out, do we really want a kind of like Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia-style tyranny? I mean, is that good for anybody? No, it's not good for anybody. Even the elites are creating a system that's going to destabilize their control. Because once you have a total tyranny, the people under you always know they can knock you off. Freedom and due process protects everyone, even the criminals. Now, continuing, as we postulated when the scandal broke, wasn't postulation, the fast and furious program that saw the ATF deliver guns into the hands of Mexican drug gangs was admittedly exploited to demonize the Second Amendment and push new gun control regulations. Documents obtained by CBS News show that the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives discuss using the covered operation fast and furious to argue for controversial new rules on gun sales. That's a quote. Emails obtained by the network show ATF agents discussing how they could tie guns involved in Mexican violence to gun deals 
and gun dealers based in the U.S. to justify the implementation of the Demand Letter 3, a regulation that required gun stores to report the sale of multiple rifles, which they went ahead and did outside law. They tried to pass the law this year. They couldn't, so they just said, we don't need laws anymore. By the way, they've already got long rifle, shotgun, or handgun, how many you're getting, through the FBI, instant background registration is what it is. Okay? Gun dealers don't like you to know that because then you won't buy from them. You'll go out and do a private sale. But that's what's going on here. And so when they say, oh, we, we just want to know if you're selling you know, more than one rifle or handgun if it's semi-auto, we just want to know. They already know. It's about telling them what to do outside of law, setting that precedent. Because that's the essence of tyranny. Just do them whatever you want. And they will do what they want. They are taking the death benefits of all U.S. military personnel. Bloomberg reported it almost a year ago. No one seems to care. When you die and you're supposed to get your life insurance, you're not going to get it. It's been announced. And all you cops that serve the system, you're just like in Europe. They're going to take all your pension funds. Firefighters, they're going to take yours. Oh, but wait. People say, oh, well, that, they're government. They, 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 that's welfare. They don't deserve their own money they paid into. Okay, well, in Portugal and in Spain, they're now going to take private pension funds that have begun it. Not, not even the old trick of a company creating a new subsidiary, moving the assets into that, then bankrupting the old subsidiary and saying, sorry, that subsidiary is bankrupt. You don't get the pension you paid into for 10, 15, 20, 30 years. No, 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 not just that scam. They're going to just take it. And if you don't like it, they can hire some goon who doesn't mind having his pension fund taken because he's a control freak that likes to beat people up. And all because we want to be a bunch of little children and won't wake up to how criminal the government is. All because we insist on being naive. All because we insist on being suckers and schmucks and idiots. Well, not me. I know criminals when I see them. All right, I need to get into the incredible police state developments with the FEMA camps being activated. Unbelievable globalist crime syndicate activity. Uh, we've got uh, so much more that we need to be breaking down here today. And I know that we're jam-packed with uh, Gerald Salente coming up and Lindsey Williams, but I do want to open the phones up again for police and military. Now that on top of the NDAA passing, secret arrest of citizens, troops on the streets, indefinite detention, now they're activating the camps. And by the way, this broke a day and a half ago. This broke Tuesday night. It's Thursday morning now. And no mainstream coverage. I mean, here's Halliburton, its subsidiary KBR, saying get ready with FEMA camps for collapse, emergency, economic, you name it, barricades, barbed wire, internment specialist. The military announcing they're preparing for it. The government admitting that it's coordinating the arrest of Occupy Wall Street, the federal government is. What are they doing? What's the White House doing in, in, in dozens of cities coordinating arrest of people? Not your jurisdiction, because you don't want a central government saying arrest people. That's to stop a fascistic takeover. The founders knew what they were doing. Yeah, you know, the Austin police chief said the sky would literally have to fall to have military on the streets of Austin. You're already paramilitary police, and you're already taking federal marching orders. I meant to bring up an article of that, because Austin hasn't arrested a bunch of people uh, except in one case. And uh, I meant to ask him, hey, uh, when, when you did have some of those arrests, because the permit wasn't right or whatever, was that federally driven? And I guess it happened the same weekend that the first coordinated arrest happened. I guess it probably was. I mean, that's, that's just wrong. Uh, man, I should have brought that up. I mean, you realize how creepy that is, regardless of what you think of Occupy Wall Street? How creepy and out of control it is to have the feds? Coordinating the arrest of people for, for not having the right permits locally or, or, or sanitation issues. That's a local issue. That's, oh, it makes me sick. People, we have these checks and balances for a reason. Our founders went through tyranny. And look at all the other examples in history. And look at this. Look at this. ISSA is not going to go forward with any type of impeachment, and they can against the head of the Justice Department. He says it's up to Obama. Oh, Obama, completely Chicago mafia run with Rezco and uh, Blagojevich and 
and and five hundred million here and six hundred million there to energy companies that don't build anything. Just a total ripoff, total theft. And General Electric heading up their their economic council, openly shutting power plants down all over the country that they don't own because they run the program and have been given a waiver. I mean, just 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 bald faced criminality. Power prices going up, blackouts being announced. I mean, a three year old could figure this out. And then this criminal, Obama, with that criminal attorney general. People are like, well, I'm scared of the attorney general. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't like him either. He was the one running Oklahoma City. You think it's fun to stand up to a murderer like this? But you got to do it. Don't you get it? They're going to ruin everything. They're going to steal everything. They like it. He shipped tens of thousands of firearms directly into Mexico. And when it started to break, they spun it like they were just tracking some guns out of some gun shops. It turns out there were fist fights at ATF locations in multiple areas of the United States, including Phoenix. Because some of them weren't total criminals. And they're like, you've got to stop shipping guns in to Mexico and drugs in. I mean, how much criminality will you accept? How much? Is there a line in the sand? Is there any moral connection to reality? And those of you out there that aren't directly involved in all of this, you know this is going on now. This is all public. There's no excuses. There's no, you didn't know, you didn't understand it. And here it is. The memo is now released to blame the Second Amendment. To blame the Second Amendment. To blame our right so a criminal government can try to take my rights. Listen, you idiots in government. The war with the British started when they came to get the guns. That was the last straw, folks, of all the abuses. And it's the same thing in Texas with my ancestors. When Santa Ana came and became a dictator and overthrew the government and said, I want those Texans to turn their guns in, who would become Mexican citizens. And they said, you know what, pal? My granddaddy fought the British over this, and I'm going to fight you. And... You, you, you morons just keep pushing, don't you? You haven't studied history. You think your black Volaclava mask scares anybody? You think the American people are going to bend over for you? I assure you they aren't, you criminals. We'll be right back with more news. Stay with us. It's InfoWar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back live today. I am your host, Alex Jones. And if you're a new listener and you're like, man, this guy's crazy, he's, he's upset, he's angry, do you understand that the government's been taken over by foreign banks publicly who've signed us on to 1.5 quadrillion, that's 1,500 trillion conservatively, that we do not owe, and that the bought and paid for media is playing along with this fraud, and that it's impossible to even pay back if we wanted to be part of the fraud? Do you understand it's debt bondage? Do you understand they've built FEMA camps? Do you understand they've trained the military to go down the street and set up checkpoints and take you to a FEMA camp? Do you understand they've trained and worked with 15 other nations in LE09, it's public, with FEMA to come into America and bring UN troops in? That's even the Washington Post now. To use Canadian and Mexican troops, quote, against domestic terrorists. And to use NORTHCOM against us. Do you understand me that they teach at West Point and the Army War College that foreign troops will have to be used in America. Do you understand it's public? Five years ago, it was secret. This is a global takeover plan. America has been taken over, just like Iraq, just like Afghanistan. You think you're fighting Al-Qaeda. Oh, yes, the people over there fighting are fighting and dying and do have courage. But the Al-Qaeda they're fighting... Most of them are goat herders who've been ordered to go fight, and it turns out their leadership, on record, is paid by the big banks. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense if you're in three-dimensional wargaming. By the way, it goes above three dimensions. But if you can just grasp this, if you're a new listener, everything can really start to move forward in your understanding. And I'm not trying to be condescending, but we don't have time to play games here. If you're big mega banks that want to get rid of people's sovereignty... And you know that the population historically will give up its freedom if they see an outside threat. You go finance the outside threat. 
and you have giant no bid contract wars and make trillions of dollars out of it and you secure the opium and run it up to 13 or 14 times what it was a decade ago and then when the troops speak out against it you kill them like pat tillman and then when that doesn't work you just have the troops go yeah we grow the opium it's patriotic fox news cnn bbc people go okay well okay we grow the opium I mean, come on, come on. The ATF ships guns into Mexico and then blames the Second Amendment. Confirmed. Release documents. Congress has them. Public. Quote, CBS News, ATF created the problem so they could be the solution to it. Oh, oh I think I've heard that before. Hegelian dialectic. Problem, reaction, solution. Look. <laughs> it, listen. This stuff's all starting to come out because there's good people in the government. I wouldn't be alive right now if most people in the government are good. They are. They're misguided like everybody else. Good apples, bad apples, whatever. But there are people who are compartmentalized. And, and the media would say, oh, that Alex Jones or Ron Paul or whoever, they're just kooks. But now they've seen everything start coming true. And now they're going, wow, this makes sense. And they're investigating and getting past the little, the little divider of compartmentalization and finding out. Finding out what's going on right next door to them. And let me tell you, it isn't pretty. I mean, you think I just get up here on air and say the government runs white slavery rings? That's sex slavery, including children? There have been congressional hearings on it. Just type it into YouTube. Type it into Google. And they have hearings where they go, yeah, uh, Dyncor Halliburton were caught running giant kidnapping rings and slave camps. Uh, and the congressperson says, well, are they going to get in trouble? And the secretary of defense says, no. I mean, just straight face. No, they're not going to. They get in a penalty box. They weren't allowed to have contracts in that region for a few months. And the congressperson says, that's, all, that's the only trouble. And they go, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's like Corzine. The New Jersey governor, former head of uh, the main enemy, Goldman Sachs, the main, J.P. Morgan Chase makes the most of the money, but they're, they're enforcer. Like, like, Goldman Sachs is like Darth Vader to Emperor Palpatine that is J.P. Morgan Chase, literally. But it's Darth Vader out there hacking everyone up around the galaxy in all these different countries, running things, you know, releasing the financial hitmen, the, the, the jackals. The Pentagon factual hitmen and contractors. In these countries, you don't take their business deals. They murder you and your family. I've interviewed the economic hitmen and others here on the show. And they tell these leaders, you will do this or bad things are about to happen. You don't do it? Okay. Oh, your, your, your child died of an illness last week. I'm sorry to hear about that. What the doctors say it was? I mean... That's who runs things. We've got to say no to them at some point because they're not going to stop. They're not going to back off. No one is safe until we recognize them and face them. And I'm not worried about myself, and I've even said it. I'm not even worried about my family. I just put them in God's hands because nobody's got a future if we don't stop these people. It's all in. you got to fully commit to it, ladies and gentlemen, and that means going and researching. So it's now admitted that the government has been caught shipping drugs in. That was New York Times Sunday, AFP Monday, but no other news, that they're shipping the guns in to blame the Second Amendment. There you go. And ISSA says that it's up to Obama to fire Holder, fire him. He's not going to fire him. I told you Holder came out, was going to come out. And said, Bush was involved. And Issa literally, basically needed a diaper break. And, and, and that was the end of it. Holder walked in there and said, I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to say anything. We could have maybe handled things a little better. But Bush was involved. And the Republicans all just went, <clears throat> well, uh, we're going to... Go ahead and stop the testimony now. Thank you. Um, uh, my Swiss bank account. Mm, uh, I mean, you, you reach this corruption level and the, the other corrupt groups can get even more corrupt because they've always got dirt on the other group. And then it's just everybody goes to town and what good old boys wouldn't do 50 years ago. I mean, they'd bid rig and military profiteer on bad parts and aircraft and, you know, run scams and give each other contracts. That's all child's play. 
In this world, it's like, well, you're not going to run white slaves. You're not with the program. But it doesn't matter. We got all the dirt on you. All your narcotics dirt, all your other dirt. And if you that's why the movie The Godfather is so good, part one. When you really get knowledge about the world, and then you learn that Mario Puzo was actually writing about real people and real things that happened, just changing the names, Frank Sinatra, all of it. Where the old godfather, you know, who's got all the political power, biggest mob don in the U.S., he just runs whores, gambling, and, and uh, had run liquor. And they come to him and they say, we're going to sell heroin. And he says, I'm not going to do that. That kills people. And so they try to kill him. And that's actually a true story. Because it was, the last name wasn't Carleone. There is a mafia family in Carleone uh, over there in the Mediterranean, but they're in Sicily. But the point is, is that... That's how this works, you see. That's the thing about corruption. Okay, run hookers, because everybody wants that anyways. Alcohol, everybody wants that. Gambling, you know, it's a vice, whatever. Run it. Make money off of it. Well, next it's, well, let's bring some drugs in. Let's sell heroin to school kids. And then after that, it's, let's go ahead and run hookers worldwide. You know, young girls we trick into working for us. And then it's, let's actually just kidnap the young 14-year-old girls. And then it's, Let's just kill them when they get pregnant too many times. Or you know what? Let's just go ahead and run little kids. Get a lot of money for those. Hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and snuff film little kids. Oh, you're not going to do that? Well, you're already involved in all of this, so you're going along with it. What comes next? Let's just go ahead and take the veterans' uh, death benefits. You know what? We'll just confuse them with some procedure. and the, We own the media. It'll be all right. You know, the public are animals. Anyways, let us lose our souls. We're profane. We're not enlightened <laughs> like the globalists. You know, we're just a bunch of idiots. We deserve it. We're cattle. And here we are. And well, here's a little newsflash. I'm not evil. I'm, 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 I'm smart to a certain extent. Got common sense, street smart, survival instinct, most importantly. I could have joined the dark side. There are a lot of people that figure this stuff out who decide to join with the evil. They decide to say, well, it's the winning team, and they join with it. I physically cannot join it. I physically am repulsed by it. I am physically repulsed by bullies and cheats and thugs and sickos and perverts and scammers and abusers, and they are my eternal enemy. Now, I'm going to go to a clip here in a moment that ties into this whole ATF situation. But here's the other angle. Confirmed, ATF plotted to use Fast and Furious to demonize the Second Amendment. And it goes on. ATF created the problem so they could be the solution to it. And CBS obtained the documents showing the ATF at the highest level setting up the Second Amendment to blame it on gun shops in America. Let's continue. The Daily Bell has an excellent article all linked and bibliographed in a move for global governance where groups that they're not sure who, but it's companies that is believed George Soros is behind, kind of like we thought he was behind Media Matters, and it turned out he was. They would deny it, and then it turned out they, he was. Uh, that uh, There's a multi-billion dollar hedge fund buying up for two, three times what it's worth gun companies and then shutting them down. And they go out and get all the liberals to sucker in and buy into it, then to go buy up companies and shut them down. And that also can get control of companies, so they'll then agree and be spokespeople for gun control. There's no end to the victim disarmament nastiness that's going on. I'm going to cover this more on the nightly news tonight. But I wanted to get to this right now. Chilling 911 tapes illustrate woman shooting home invasion suspect. And I turned on local talk radio this morning. They were playing these clips, and it turned out it wasn't someone she knew. But at the end, she sees him bleeding to death there and says, um, or shooting the guy who's on the ground. And she says, oh, gosh, I hope it's somebody I don't know. And it wasn't somebody she didn't know. They're busting in. She's telling them go away. They don't stop. And the 911 operator's like, well, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't shoot. Police are about to arrive. And, of course, there's places like California, folks. Uh, beautiful state. A lot of great people. But, my goodness, a lot of d d victims. You know, I got daughters, and they're learning how to shoot guns. Well, the seven-year-old is. 
the three-year-old will soon. And when they go away, wherever they go to college or wherever they live, we still have a country then, they're going to have firearms. And they'll live off campus if they have to. When they go on campus, they're going to have a stun gun. And, and you know what? My girls are going to kill anybody that tries to mug them or touch them. And my son, too. It is such a good feeling that I've got concealed carry holders that work in my office. It's such a good feeling I have a 357 Magnum right here. And we're not waiting to get on our knees to some criminal. We're not waiting with some nut to execute us in the dirt. Ha, feminism. There was a big study came out where feminism is actually the one that degrades women and, and is misogynistic and devalues them. That was always the plan. Just because they labeled it feminism, get all the women working so the state gets the kids and so you can turn everybody into a slave and end the family. Turn women against men. All social engineering. They said, how do we get women smoking cigarettes? They said, pay the feminists to smoke them. And we'll get the money and, we'll, and, and it'll kill them. They knew this even in the 30s. And we'll get uh, you know, reduced population with it. They said, okay. They called them liberty torches. Go look it up. Edward Bernays. Your grandma died of cigarette smoking. It was trendy. It's trendy. People run off a cliff if you tell them it's trendy. Well, this woman didn't go with the trendiness. There have been some robberies in the area. She got a 38. Everybody calls a 38 special 38 or even a 357. 357 is a deadly round. It's high velocity for a small handgun. And she shot the guy three times. She kept coming in. And boy, you see the photo of the guy. He looks like he was whacked out on cable or elf juice or something. Let's go ahead and go to this chilling audio. And the, and the national media, the local media was like, should she have done it? And callers were calling in in Texas and saying, no, she should have shot in the in the air. Oh, yeah, maybe she's in an apartment. Yeah, yeah, shoot the people above you. No, if you're going to pull a gun, aim right at the center of them and pull the trigger and unload. Because there are a lot of people, you shoot them once, they get mad. You shoot some really mean person, some crazy person, you don't know what drugs they're on. At least pop them four or five times. Let me tell you, if I ever pull a gun on somebody, I'm pulling the trigger. You don't aim a gun at somebody unless you're going to pull the trigger. And she did the right thing, but they're all like, she should have fired in the air. Oh, yeah, some guy's breaking in. Well, let's go ahead and go to the tape. Here it is. He's coming to my front yard. Oh, God, he's coming to the window. I'm going to shoot him again. No, ma'am, don't. Where is he? Right there. There he is. I'm going to shoot him. Okay. Ma'am, listen, listen to the officers in the area. I don't want you to fire your gun. He's coming to the window. Lay me up. The suspect, 37-year-old Jesse Theus, is shot dead. Okay. The now, in the full tape, which I'm going to air on the nightly news tonight, He's busting in. It just goes on as he's breaking through the window with his arm. She shoots him once, keeps coming. Shoots him again, keeps coming. Comes through, she shoots him again. And you look at the photo of the guy. In fact, can you guys pull up the ABC News article? It's got his uh, photo. Chilling 911 tapes illustrate woman shooting home invasion suspect. Chilling 911 tapes illustrates woman shooting home invasion suspect. It's click news. It'll come up. I mean, he looks like from his other previous arrest mugshot, that he was, I don't know, that looks like PCP, LSD, methamphetamine on top of it. I mean, look at him. He looks completely out of his gourd. He looks like Charles Manson. And you know what? It is such a good thing to live in Texas or to live in Arizona or to live in Vermont with our lower crime rates because you don't have as much. They, and in Texas, they come by, and if you're home, they barely break in because they understand most houses have got people with guns who are going to kill you. But the media is saying, well, was it wrong to do this? They are, and, and one local host was, it's kind of scary, the, you know, the liberal. It's kind of scary that she did that. I, I don't know what I think. I mean, can you imagine having somebody like that as the father of children? This local host has children. Can you imagine fathers? who don't have firearms protect their family. I mean, I mean, what are you going to do when somebody comes in with a knife or a gun into your house?
What are you going to do, just, just like get out and lick their boots? I mean, what are you going to do? How were we turned into this? How did we become this? How, how did we get a media that, that, that this old woman gets a gun a week before because there's been break-ins in the area, a guy that looks like he's whacked out on every drug known to man, is, is breaking through, she's shooting him and he's not stopping. And people say, is that the right thing? I heard women calling in saying it wasn't. I mean, they want to be raped, they want to be killed. Okay, we got Gerald Salente coming up right at the start of the hour. We're going to get him on the horn uh, as Corzine uh, is about to testify. He told the Washington Post, though, he didn't know where the money went. The private bank accounts they took. This is the former head of Goldman Sachs. I don't know where the money went, but he says he's sorry he doesn't know where it went. I'm sorry, I don't know where your private accounts we drained went that weren't even part of MF Global. And the media's like, well, that's kind of reasonable. A third committee is now calling him before him. And then they'll act like they're real concerned, while a lot of them, it turns out, on the Democratic Party have been paid off, including Bill Clinton. What was it? He gets $50,000 a month, I was reading Bill Clinton gets, from MF Global. Oh, this is one of the biggest campaign contributors. In fact, just last week, Corzine had a big, uh, what was it? $30,000 a plate for the head table, 10000 for the other plates to be in an Obama fundraiser? <laughs> They're literally contributing part of the money to their little puppet, Obama. I mean, this is just Chicago mob going, hey, boss, look at the public. They're a bunch of idiots. Let's go ahead and take their bank accounts. Yeah, let's do it. And if they don't like it, we'll just use the army on them. Yeah. <laughs> Gee, boss, it's great having a gullible public like this, isn't it? What can we do next? Well, we already put poison in their water to brain damage them. And then when they get cancer, we've got the treatments for that as well. We told them we own their DNA now. <laughs> it's funny. Oh, boss, we got caught shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. And they, they caught us shipping the drugs in from Afghanistan and Mexico. Never mind that. These idiots won't do nothing. There's nothing they won't do. We've already got Dyncor CPS grabbing the kids for us to ship overseas, even when they got caught in Florida and nobody got in trouble. Wow, boss, we can even kidnap their kids now. Yeah, it's a great world we're building. We're good people. I'm sick of it and I'm tired of it and I want it to end. <clears throat> They've deployed another aircraft carrier with nuclear weapons to the Middle East to menace. All that's going bonkers crazy. The reset with Russia's over. With Putin saying the U.S. is messing with their internal elections. Uh, Putin, you mean the mega banks that run our country? The oligarchs you kicked out eight, nine years ago? Not that you're good, but you did kick out the Rothschild banks. Every time they arrested a head banker, it would turn out they were Rothschild or Queen of England fronts. And the money had already been transferred out. They were all front men. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to come back and get into uh, MF Global and the rest of it. We haven't had him on a week and a half with a big update. One of the victims of these criminals of the Chicago banker mafia uh, system. Of course, they just use Chicago mob as the as the muscle on the ground. It's all Rothschild, Rockefeller, British Queenie, Dutch Queenie, and a few others. Um, you know, they're the folks that run empires, takeover of nations. Friendly, nice old lady. She wears a little crown up there, which says, I'm a god and you're a slave. Uh, Zion, please begin your testimony when you are ready. Thank you, Chairman. And Ms. Chairman uh, Lucas. Let's just listen to the first, first couple of remarks. Members of the committee, like all of you, I am devastated by the enormous impact on many people's lives resulting from the events surrounding the MF Global bankruptcy. Of course, my distress and sadness pale in comparison to the losses and hardships that customers, farmers and ranchers and others, employees and investors have suffered. Their plight weighs on my mind every day. As the Chief Executive Officer of MF Global at the time of its bankruptcy, I truly apologize to all those affected. Before I address what happened, I must make it clear that since my departure from MF Global on November 3rd this year, I have not had access to many of the relevant documents which are essential to my being able to testify accurately Unbelievable. about the chaotic days preceding the declaration of oh. bankruptcy. The members should also understand that the committee turned down my request to testify voluntarily in January. I had hoped that by that time I would have had 
obtained and reviewed relevant records oh. so that I could be more helpful to the committee. While I intend to be responsive to the best of my ability today without adequate time and materials to prepare, I may be, able, may be unable to respond to various questions members might pose. Other questions given my specific role in the company will be questions for which I simply have no personal knowledge. Make it very clear, many of your questions may well be ones I myself have. When I joined the company in late March 2010, MF Global was primarily a voice-based broker that provided Alex? execution and clearing services for Hello, products Alex. traded in derivative markets like and exchanges around the world. I'd like to comment on what he's world. already said. The firm had reported losses in five consecutive what quarters said. before I arrived. He's, what he's doing is he's already years, pleading the fifth. Isn't it wonderful? He was going to wait until January. Oh, yeah, as everything got further and further away from the news, then he could slime in. Yeah, Causeline could slime in with in January after this thing blows over a little bit. And oh, how sorry he is. Yeah, his heart is bleeding. He's worth, what, a half a billion dollars. Yes, how about coming up with the money to, to cover the losses that the rest of us took. Gerald Number Salente is our guest. We just came back live. As we were going live at 8 after, uh, they uh, brought uh, Corzine in, uh, and uh, he has basically taken the uh, fifth now, right as Gerald, uh, we invited Gerald to you know speak over him and uh, give us some live coverage. And so Corzine basically has come in and taken the fifth, uh, as the Washington Post reported that he would take the fifth, and he told the Washington Post that he, his lawyers did. They, they don't know where the money is. So how convenient. Uh, the money is taken out of the accounts in early November. He leaves, and now he doesn't know anything because he left the company, and he's the one that made the 40-to-1 bet. This is unbelievable. Gerald Salente uh, is our guest breaking this down. I mean, so this is our worst fears. They're trying to set the precedent, Gerald. And, of course, for those that just joined us, uh, you lost over six figures from your own private account. Uh, that the large Chicago uh, Mafia Exchange, uh, the CMT, the Chicago uh, you know, Trading Group, uh, had uh, the Chicago Mercantile had come out and said, oh, we're always going to cover everything. It's all insured. Now you're being told it's not insured. It's your money. What type of precedent does this set? Where does this go from here? We haven't talked to you in a week and a half. What have you learned? Uh, well, I, I've learned what I learned before, and that's what I'm telling everybody. Your money isn't safe. And for all you jerks out there shooting your mouth off that don't know what you're talking about, they've never had a seller like this in the history of the commodity exchange in 150 years. And I wasn't speculating. I made a deal to pick up delivery. And all those jerks out there that say I should have known better. Yeah, how about this one? All those jerks in in New Jersey that voted in this Don Corzine as senator and governor. You should have known better, too. And all you other jerks out there, like the Obama administration, that welcomes Corzine into the White House and has him throw $35,000 a plate dinners. Yeah, they should have known better, too. Yeah, everybody but me should have known. I should have known. Nobody else should have known that Corzine was giving us the shaft. So let's go back and play this over. So these committee hearings begin with a guy asking a question, a congressman, who said he didn't know until today that Gary Gensler, the head of the Commodities Future Trading Commission, was a lieutenant of Don Corzine when Corzine ran the Goldman Sachs gang back in the 90s. He didn't know that, the guy asking questions. Then the question he asks was, well, you had a meeting back with uh, Gary Gensler and John Corzine uh, several months ago. Do you have notes of that meeting? And here's what the woman who they're questioning, and you know why they're questioning this woman and not questioning Gary Gensler? Gary's gone! Gary had to go on an important trip! Oh! No, they won't. That's like asking a soldier from the Don what the Don was thinking. So they don't even have Gensler there today. Here's what she said. No substantive issues were discussed. Hey, sweetie pie, what are you talking about? No substantive issues were discussed? What was this meeting about? What the Yankees were going to do in spring training? I mean, come on. 
You don't get the two people together, the head of the Chicago Futures, the uh, head of the Commodities Future Trading Commission and one of the top guys of the biggest trading firms in the world together to talk about nothing. Oh, let's put you this know? in so layman terms, though, Gerald, why this is so big to explain this. And then this was out a month ago. The head of the CFTC, who is there to regulate this, is the former lieutenant of uh, Don John Corzine, the the Obama money bag man, who sets up MF Global, grabs a bunch of other companies, buys them and then steals private bank accounts, which they admit is totally illegal and was supposedly insured. Now they say they don't know where the money is. They're talking to his lieutenants and they're saying, oh, what was at this meeting? Oh, I don't know. Nothing substantive. He gets there and says, I know nothing. I left the company a month ago and all this imploded, so I know nothing when he's the one who was heading it up and takes the fifth. I mean, this is so incredibly ridiculous. And it goes further. The head of the CFTC, who's disappeared, maybe he's in Paraguay, the head of the CFTC, maybe he's the boys of Brazil down there with the old Nazis, I don't know. It now turns out, Reuters reports, that he was invested in MF Global. So this is, uh, Gerald, this is, like you said, 150 years of the mercantile. Th this has never been done. What's going on here? What's happening? And they got the trolls attacking you, of course. They're attacking us. They're saying it's good, the ATF now admits, that they did ship guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. They're like, the Second Amendment's who's bad because the government shipped guns into Mexico to blame it on it. So that's always blame the messenger. Gerald, this is huge. Yes, it is. So you know what they were talking about at this meeting? They were talking about whether Don John, the governor Corzine, could raid segregated accounts like mine. That's what they were talking about. And they don't, they don't think they have any notes because, well, it was, according to that woman, you know, just a little idle chit-chat. No, this whole thing is a scam. The whole system is collapsing. It's collapsing in front of us. So what I'm telling people, your money's not safe anywhere unless you got it in your pocket or under your mattress because they're going to rob it from us. And here's what these clowns that in this commission that are asking these questions, you know, they're saying things like, well, you know, we've learned a valuable lesson from this. So how could we put better locks on the barn door so the horse doesn't escape? And they're not even talking about hanging a horse thief. Oh, no, that's off limits. No, no. Here's Corzine who ran out with the money in front of everybody saying, I know nothing. And they don't even grill him. It is unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. It's what's happened. Fascism has come to America. It's the merger of state and corporate powers. And you have no greater power than the money power. During this time of Christmas, let us all remember that the only time Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, became angry and violent is when he picked up a whip and drove the money changers out of the temple. And that's a fact. And that's what's going on now. The money changers are in control of the temple of Washington, D.C. They're controlling everybody's lives. And they're driving this country into ruin. And everybody is afraid to look at who's behind this. The Rothschilds, as I said before, would have been jealous to see what the Goldman Sachs gang has pulled off. John Corzine, former CEO of Goldman Sachs. Gary Gensler, the head of the Commodities Future Trading Commission. His right-hand lieutenant when he was running Goldman Sachs. Henry Paulson, the former Treasury Secretary of the United States that started TARP and the big giveaways to save the two big Goldman Sachs. banks. Goldman Sachs. Who's the head of the now the European uh, uh, the, the European Bank? ECB. Former head of Goldman Sachs. Monty, yeah, for, former Goldman Sachs. All of them. Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs. The new Prime Minister of Italy. Mario Three Card Monty. International advisor for Goldman Sachs. Pop and Drayov that took Greece down. Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. Who was the guy that we ran the Clinton 
White House, Goldman Sachs, Treasury Department, Robert Rubin. Goldman Where Sachs. was he from? Goldman Sachs. And I said this before, and I'm going to keep saying it. If the names on Wall Street would name Salenti, Caruso, Mandavi, Puccini, Rossini, they call it the mafia. But hey, not the J.P. Morgan Chase crowd, not the Goldman Sachs gang, not the Citigroup criminals. Hey, Salenti, what's wrong with you? Stay there. You're, You're on fire. Stay there. What happened, man? You used to be energetic, happy, and wow, did the ladies love you. You know, you think you've seen criminal activity right now from government. When societies follow this path, it only gets crazier until everything collapses. Think about history. Think about all the other governments and the corruption and the out-of-control behavior. Ceausescu would just turn the power off of the whole country to train everybody to accept being charged more, and he basically owned and controlled the power company. And then only the lights would be on in his palace. This is a way to control people. They're now doing that here with this same mafia shutting down all the power plants that General Electric doesn't own so that they then make double, triple, quadruple the profits, just like Enron did in California using the, the environmentalist. These are criminals. Gerald Salente is with us till 40 after then. The one, the only. Lindsey Williams joins us with some incredible breaking news. Uh, Gerald, you're right. The collapse is on. I wanted to bring this point to your attention. You know, they passed the NDAA, use the military on the streets, indefinite detention of citizens, North Korea-style legislation. Now I got secretive documents that have been confirmed that Halliburton subsidiary KBR is preparing to activate the emergency camps for financial collapse around the U.S. So for the first time ever, they're now putting the contracts out to begin manning the FEMA camps, Gerald Salente. What's your view on that, Gerald? Uh, we dropped off a little bit. I heard part of it about them activating the emergency camps. I totally believe that's the reason why they passed that legislation. It's going to be one of our top trends of 20 2012, economic martial law. I've been talking about this before it's happened. And what they're going to do is the European system's collapsing. It's collapsing. There's no way of saving it. The entire financial economic system is under collapse. In China, look, pick up yesterday's paper. Check out what, what's going on in Brazil. They were growing, Alex, at about 7.5%. They're down to zero. It's going to happen around the world. You look what's going on in China. Housing, three-month slump, and it's declining like wildfire. Empty buildings all over. The bubble is bursting. There's no way of salvaging this. What I've said is that... After the holidays, after they get the people to spend the money that they don't have on Christmas junk, they're going to pull the plug in the first quarter of 2012. When that happens, they are going to institute some form of martial law, economic martial law. And what that means is that you're going to see bank holidays, possibly dollar devaluations, some kind of draconian measures. As that takes place, remember now, all of these movements are heating up already. The Occupy movements, people are getting angry. They are go and look what the goon squads do. You can see the perfect picture of the future by looking at that guy Pike. You know, the fat boy over there spraying little kids with pepper spray as he's shaking it up with enough body armor on there, you know, to, to, to protect them from, you know, the Hulk. And by but the no. way, he lost his house to the banker scams, but he doesn't even care, obviously, but it's worse than that. In Oakland and uh, in L.A., they're taking them to the local, uh, in the case of L.A., the, the Dodgers Stadium. They're actually doing the martial law drills, uh, and it's worse than that. The Russians are saying get ready for war. The Pakistanis have thrown the U.S. out. There's nuclear warships cruising around, threatening. All bedlam is breaking loose. The, the, the Iranians are threatening to block the Strait of Hormuz, just like you said in your trends for 2011 a year ago. The next great war, they always start a war.
They always start a war after the financial collapse and after they milk the system and grab every dollar out of it and squeeze it out of the people. When there's nothing left to squeeze, they take you to war. They get you killed. And the Iranian one, that's the flashpoint. Look at what's going on. Add it up. Syria. It's collapsing. They have a huge amount of problems over there. The United States is supporting the, the anti-government movement, as is other European countries. And now Turkey's moving into that. Who is Syria's greatest ally? Iran. Look at the sanctions they're pushing on in Iran. This is a replay of World War II with Japan. Remember when they cut off Japan from getting oil supplies? The same thing is happening now in another scenario. Iran is the third. Anybody that has these many fingers could count that high. They're the third largest world oil supplier behind Russia and Saudi Arabia. Now it's making it impossible for Iran to sell their oil. Stay there. Let's get your forecast straight ahead. By the way, it's in Reuters. It's admitted Western-backed rebels have blown up the main gas and oil pipeline into Damascus, Syria. So there, I mean, the war is on. They admit the West and Israel is bombing Iran, blowing up bases right now. I mean, it is on. This war has already started, and it's run by criminal banks that want to take your bank account. It's our final segment with Gerald Salente, who I really appreciate in his busy schedule, uh, giving us an update on MF Global now that Corzine has gone up and taken the fifth because he knows nothing about what happened in the collapse. He was just the head of the company who had all the key federal regulators were his former employees and who were invested with him. So, uh, Gerald Salente, you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars missing. Now they're talking about $3 billion missing. And they're just saying, Congress is like, gee, how do we not have this happen again? There's no discussion of how dare you steal this money? How dare you destabilize everything? So here's my question. And you're getting into all the global destabilization in Iran. I want you to finish with that, Gerald. Then we've got uh, the one, the only, Lindsey Williams coming up with information that dovetails with all this from his inside well company sources that have been proven to be very accurate. My question for you is, what's the end game? What's the method of the madness? Uh, why do they think they can get away with this? I mean, I, this points towards they are just going to start a giant war. And as you said, they don't care because they run all the regulators and they know the war is going to be so bad that people will just rally around the crooks uh, instinctively as they always do. I mean, this really signifies how incredibly reckless these guys are. Uh, Gerald Salente. Well, all you have to do, and I'm sure you've seen it, is that that clip of Lindsey Graham, the cracker down there from South Carolina, and Carl Comover Levin from Michigan, I believe, and uh, John McCain debating, was it Senate Bill 1867 that robs us of all of our rights? All you have to do is watch a video clip of these clowns blabbing their mouth off. They could only get away with that in their Senate chamber and a lot of guards around them. Because if they came around me or any of my, the people that I associate with, we would lay these guys out verbally to stop their baloney. But what they're doing, Alex, again, in this Iran, look what happened, as you mentioned. Iran lost a missile testing site, a uranium testing site, and they shot down an American drone over Iranian territory. Could you imagine if an Iranian drone was over American territory? Oh, wow. Obama would be sending those missiles over there. The place would be blowing up. Oh, but it's OK for us to do it because I'll tell you why to answer your question. You have psychopaths in power. It's as simple as that. These people are out of their minds. You know how you say you can tell the attitude of a person by who they are. 
If you go down to the ghetto and you see some loser out there that's shot up and out of his mind walking around like this with the pants down to there and the hat back there, you know where the cat's coming from. If you watch Lindsay the Cracker Graham over there in, in South Carolina talking as he's weaving back and forth like this with his hands in his pocket or comb over Levin telling us to jive or McCain that's stiff as a board and you wonder if he has a brain left in his head, you can see who's taking us down the crapper. You get it? You have crazy people running the country. They're psychopaths. Well, you're right, and so that's where they're taking us. War, destruction, death, and they love the big crises. They've got the FEMA camps ready. They're publicly saying, I mean, Graham said, you bet we'll arrest citizens in America. You bet we'll kill whoever we want worldwide. I mean, he you is crazy. It. I mean, some little weird oily guy who's reportedly blackmailed because of his homosexuality, just weaving around sweating, going, we bet we'll kill Americans. Ah, ah. And then, I mean, you're right. And, and then Levin creeping around like Igor or something. Uh, and, and then McCain looks completely insane. I know, and these people are telling us what to do. It's beyond the belief. They're telling us what to do. They're telling us that they, you know, they, that the, the Graham Cracker over there, he said America is a battlefield. He's saying this is a battlefield. Look, I know commuting to work back and forth every day isn't a lot of fun, but this is no battlefield. There's been no attacks. He's talking about Al-Qaeda. What Al-Qaeda? You even hear Petraeus, who's now the head of the CIA, saying that in Af Afghanistan, there's lucky to be 100 Al-Qaeda left. What are they talking about? They're there for the opium. But in closing, in closing, Gerald, uh, clearly they're capable of staging events. Clearly, uh, now the Justice Department documents, CBS got them, confirming that they did plan to ship the guns to Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. In the words of the CBS, ATF created the problem so they could be the solution to it. And the memo said that they could use this to ban semi-automatics. I mean, I mean, uh, right there, right there. These guns have killed conservatively hundreds of people, including three police officers here in the U.S. and Border Patrol. I mean, this is an example of the mindset of these people, Gerald. Yes, it is. And everyone, if you wake up one day and you never hear again from Alex Jones or Gerald Salenti, it's because now it's law. The Senate has passed it, codified. The military could come in, crash into your studio and our offices Grab us, take us away, send us to do whatever they want with us. We have no trial. We have no jury. We have no rights. And everyone out there better find the moral courage within them to stand up, speak out and take action because you're only going to become a slave. The slavery laws are in place. You will become a slave for Walmart, Target, Federated Stores, ConAgra, go down the list. You're there in control, and they're going to take away everything. The economic martial law will be imposed. There's going to be a bank holiday, a very high probability of it in the new year. The system is collapsing, and now they're putting the goon squads in place to lock you up and throw you away. Well, wait, Gerald, in closing... Exist. Uh, even um, Greece now admits there's bank runs going on over there. More and more people are getting their money out here. I mean, this is really, really uh, creepy what's going on. Yes, it is. And that's one of the reasons why I'm warning everyone. Your money is not safe with anybody but yourself. That's why they came up with all of these stories over the years, how people took their money out of the bank and put it in their mattress. And then when you look at all these derivatives that you talk about that now take precedent, by the way, that these banks have tens of trillions of rather than depositors insurance. The derivatives play. No, no, no. Wait a minute. And in Portugal, it's mainstream news. They took private pension funds. But it's only a one-time hit, Gerald, and gave them to the mega banks to pay off derivatives two days ago. They actually, so the government took control to protect them and took 30% off the top to give the bankers private ones, not even some cop's pension, 
which I hear them on the media selling, well, they, that, they, they got too big of pensions. That's not their money either. The cops paid into it. The firemen paid into it. I mean, they're really maneuvering everyone to steal everything. And in closing, because we're going to our next guest, and I, I know you've got to go, and we appreciate your time. TrendsResearch.com will get another update from you next week if you can be gracious enough to do it, Gerald. In closing, I get these emails saying, we had a man on the street last week about it, uh, hey, the government's passing laws to secretly arrest you, disappear into a black hole like Hitler or North Korea. And they would say, well, I have nothing to hide. I'm a good person. They don't seem to get that it's not about you being a good person. It's about criminals running government that want to rob you. Can you explain in, in 60 seconds to people that think, oh, I'm nice, so they're going to be, Corzine's going to be nice to me? Yeah, it's the Stockholm Syndrome. It's when they beat you and beat you and you become to love your torturer. Yeah, you and I are nice people, too. We're very gracious and kind and loving and caring. We're nice people, but we speak out for our rights and our self-respect. All you people out there that think because you keep your mouth shut and you don't say anything or do anything or have the spine or backbone to stand up for yourself, the, it's the Warsaw, Warsaw Ghetto Syndrome. Don't speak out. Be nice. The Germans have taken over the country. The Gestapo is here. Don't resist them. God will provide, said the rabbis who were telling the people not to resist. Bye bye. Get on that cattle car. Everything will be OK. And that's what people have to face. It's the Warsaw Ghetto Syndrome that's happening in America. The people are afraid to speak out. They think that by turning the other way or maybe oming for a couple of hours a day are going to keep the fascists from taking over your life. And it's not going to happen. And, I, and I'm here to say it. I am not going off on any cattle car or army truck somewhere. And, and the good news is gun sales are at record pace. If even a few percentage of people, this keeps going, defend themselves. As Alexander Schultz and Nietzsche said, the secret police system will grind to a halt. I'm telling you, this is not Nazi Germany or Soviet Russia, Gerald. And, and you talked to a lot of folks who've been getting ready. People, uh, I don't think these these Corzine type crooks realize. I think they're so full of chutzpah, they think they're going to get away with it. They're not, Gerald. Yeah. Again, I'm, I I want peace. You know, I'd, violence won't bring it'll only bring, be get more violence. It has to be an intellectual revolution. And again, I keep pushing for directdemocracynow.org. Let the people vote. You want to let's put that 1867 up for a vote for the people, Lindsay. Let's put it up a vote for the people, Carl Comover. Let's put it up vote for the people, McCain. Don't you tell us what we should have. Let the people vote. All right, Gerald Salente. God bless, and we'll talk to you soon. Now, shifting gears, Lindsay Williams, best-selling author, researcher, as he says in his own words, by the grace of God, 30 years ago, worked for a long time uh, on the Trans-Alaska Pipeline, met a lot of big top CEOs, became their inner boardroom chaplain as a liaison to the workers. That's a popular thing that's done. And uh, he uh, joins us because uh, Ken Fromm died of cancer last year. Now it's been almost a year. And, uh, of course, I knew who he knew about it behind the scenes. Um, Dr. Stan Monteith had talked to him and confirmed what he told Lindsay off record. Uh, the other gentleman is even more high-powered, former CEO of a big three oil company, and gives him similar intel. And remember, Lindsay, over a year ago, said, you watch the Middle East, it's going to be engulfed in flame and fake revolution, but then watch China. Now China, president two days ago, said, we're preparing for war with the U.S. They've never talked like that since the 60s. Nixon went in the 70s, that stopped. Uh, the Russians are threatening stuff, openly attacking the U.S. government. Folks, it's on. Lindsey Williams has incredible intel on Iran and what's really happening there. We've only got about three or four minutes for the break. Give us a preface of what's coming up and the, and the new intel you've learned from your source because it fits in perfectly with the full spectrum analysis we've got. Um, Lindsey Williams, thanks for coming on. Of all the times that I've ever had the privilege, Alex, of being on your show, I have never felt such an urgency and an honor as today because what the elite have told me within the past five months since I had the privilege of being on your show last is going to be so startling that you're going to say Lindsey Williams is crazy. You, you don't change that dial today. I know 
a number of years ago when Mr. Fromm called me on the phone and said, Chaplain, would you like the world to think you're a prophet? And he told me that the price of crude oil was going from $147 a barrel to $50 a barrel. And you thought I was crazy. I got laughed at on radio shows. Well, if you think that was prophetic or crazy, you've heard nothing compared to what you're going to hear today. Because I want to give you exactly what they have told me. And it's not necessarily that there has not been a crash yet. It's why they have not let the crash take place yet. It's not necessarily that we have not had war with Iran yet, even though the drums have been beating for a long time. But it's why they have told me that they haven't had war with Iran yet, and when they do expect to have it, which I've been given within the past week's time. All of this I plan to give today on your show, Alex, and I do not give it to glorify Lindsey Williams. I give all of the credit to God. He allowed me by his providence years ago to rub shoulders with these people, keep in touch with them over the past 35 years, and now they are in their 70s and 80s. And folks, please... Old men talk. When they know they're facing eternity, they know that I was probably the only chaplain of my kind that they ever knew. They're telling me things today because of their conscience. And as a result, I'm going to pass it on to you so I can save your dinner table so that you can say that you heard it on the Alex Jones Show and on Genesis Network. And Alex, it's a privilege to be with you today to tell you every single agenda of the elitist through the year 2012, because 2012 is, without a doubt, according to what I'm hearing from these people, going to be, 2012 will be the most startling, the most unusual, the most eventful year in 2,000 years. And I say that unequivocally. As, as, as positively as I can, and you will hear all of their agendas today on the Alex Sean Show. Amazing. Let's go through it, then. Let's get to Iran first. Uh, let's get the data dump if we can, Lindsay, and then go through more of it in detail so towards the end of the next hour we can take calls. I've got some other breaking news that just came in after the break. It is incredible. I just, it, it is so wild what we just witnessed here in the office. We'll be right back. Stay Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show Because there's a war on for your mind All right, Pastor Lindsey Williams is our guest And I knew who Ken Fromm was I knew that other talk show hosts, great patriot uh, and author Had interviewed uh, this gentleman off record and confirmed what uh, he was telling Mr. Williams And of course... Uh, that individual is Dr. Stan Monteith talking to Ken Fromm. I know the name of the other uh, former Big Three Oil Company CEO. And uh, I know that uh, Monteith separately confirmed it. I, I could call the person up and confirm it, but I don't need to. I know uh, Monteith has done it. Uh, and uh, again, this is important information we're getting from Lindsey Williams right now. Try to make sense of what's happening out there. So you were given five things that took you months to decide what to do with. And lately, you were given the Iran situation. Give us a boil down and then go through it. Lindsey Williams, you've got the floor. Go ahead. 2012 will be the most eventful year in 2,000 years. Don't take that for granted. That, that You're going to see it happen. Alex, you probably will have me on your show at least once a month during the year 2012. Just to interpret. Uh, what these elite have already told me that they had planned to do. I'm going to begin with the most controversial first. I had planned on using those five items of agenda, but I'm going to do the opposite. I want to begin where you suggested I begin with Iran. This is more on anyone else's mind right now than any other one thing. So quickly, three years ago, Dr. Stan Monteith called me on the phone one day. Our Army, our Navy, our Air Force, everybody was sitting over there in the Persian Gulf all ready for an invasion of Iran. I was even saying, it looks like we're going to have an invasion, a war with Iran. Dr. Stan Monteith called me and said, Chaplain, would you please call your elitist friend and ask him if there's going to be a war with Iran. Folks, I'm saying this to prove to you that they start war, they end war. Nothing ever happens except that they have already planned it behind closed doors. And you'll see this because you've watched it unfold before your eyes. I called Mr. Fromm, who was alive at that time, and I said, Ken, is there going to be a war with Iran? 
I'll never forget his response. He actually chuckled over the telephone, and he said, Chaplain, no, there is not going to be any war with Iran for at least two and one-half years from now. And he he said, that is nothing but saber-rattling over there. And you said that at the time. You said that at the time. It's in your archives, Alex. I came on your show, and I said it. And, folks, you have lived it. For three years, there has not been war with Iran exactly as Doc, as Mr. Ken Prom said it. Now, there is going to be war with Iran. Are you ready? Here it is. I was given it less than seven days ago. I did not ask for this. This time, I did not call my elitist friend who's still alive and say, what about Iran? I did not do this. Instead, he sent me, of his own will, an email, and you won't find it because it's not out there any place that you can pick it up, but he sent it to me, and he told me exactly what's going to happen. Now, they are going to have war with Iran. Please, put this down. It is going to happen. It's going to be horrifying. I'll tell you what his opinion is as we go along through it. It is not going to happen this month, nor next month, nor probably the next month. It is going to happen, and they have an approximate time date for it. The reason why they're going to let it happen, well, first of all, let me tell you what they want. Now, keep in mind the elite are not God. They just think they are. And they don't always get their way. But if they get their way, here's what's going to happen. Israel will not fire the first shot. No, I know, uh, I, again, uh, use the letter writers, please forgive me. All I can do is just tell you what the elite tell me. Israel will not fire the first shot if the elite have their way. America will not fire the first shot if the elite have their way. Instead, uh, Iran is going to be intimidated. They're going to be harassed. They are going to have every kind of thing imaginable imposed on them. And they want Iran to make the first fire. They want it to be the shot heard around the world and to come from Iran itself. And they want it to take place for a very definite reason. And, Alex, you put it on your website. I picked it up also, but I got it off of your website. Folks, please listen to Alex Jones every day. He's telling you things you're not getting anyplace else. The Genesis Network, they're giving out information you won't get any other place. You've got to listen to it. So, Alex, I got on your website, and I picked this up. You had it there. I'm going to repeat it because this goes along with what my elitist friend told me, and here it is. The subscriber-only report, the Debka file, a Israeli intelligence outfit, which has proven to be accurate in the past, revealed recently... At the end of the NATO operations in Libya, the President Barack Obama stated to America's senior allies, Britain, France, Germany, Italy, uh, Saudi Arabia, and he stated what? With their notice of his plan to attack Iran, no later, please, put these dates down. Put them beside your calendar. Okay. With uh, attack Iran no later than September or October of 2012, unless Tehran halts its nuclear weaponization program. Folks, you know they aren't going to halt it. He knows they're not going to halt it. He's doing this intentionally for a reason. Now, my elitist friend did not point me to the Debka files. You had it on your website, Alex. I am saying what my latest pen told me was there's not going to be a war with Iran this month, next month. I know America's warships are over there beside Syria. Russia has already moved in their armada of warships over there by Syria. You surely must know that there are 30 Yakhunt missiles that Russia has moved into Syria. You are aware of this. I hope that you understand what this missile is. You've got to go on the website and look at what it does. It travels three times the speed of sound. There is no way that America's warships that are near Syria are going to be able to stop it before they get wiped out. And there are 30 of them already. They've been moved in there when the Russians went in with their ships just recently. Every bit of this is in preparation for what they know is going to be inevitable. It will not take this place this month nor next next month. The elite want it to take place later on up into 2012. It is all a part of their program. And I'll, I'll give you now the personal opinion of my elitist friend. He went on to say what they want. They do not want America to have the first strike. They don't want Israel to have the first strike. They want Iran to have it because they're going to be so intimidated. But then he said, Lindsay, 
I believe this will be, and his his words, he didn't hear this behind closed doors. Uh, He he believes this personally himself. He said, Lindsay, I believe this is going to be the beginning of World War III. That that was his personal opinion, off the cuff from what he heard behind closed doors. Well, the Rand Corporation said two years ago they want something bigger than a regional war to distract the global implosion and the banking takeover. They need that. And... uh, it actually then leaked out after Debka and others reported it that you know there may be a strike, but the Pentagon thinks it's a year until they get a nuke or whatever. But then Netanyahu wants it earlier because of political elections and things. Uh, but certainly they've got special forces and others blowing stuff up, killing people all over uh, Iran. That's now confirmed. Uh, they've got spy planes. Uh, I've been told not just surveilling, but dropping bombs. Bombs are being dropped. There's satellite photos of giant craters at these sites, the missile site and others. Uh, so they are trying to actually, they tried to kill Ahmed Dinajid, who was scheduled to be there last week when that happened, or a week and a half ago, at that missile base. That's been confirmed now. He'll drive over to bridge, and the bridge blows up behind him or right in front of him. Uh, they're moving his schedule around to stop it. But the point is, they're trying to get him to attack and the mullahs to attack, because, yes, they want to be able to say that. But they could. Did your elitist source say anything about them staging something to blame it on Iran and say Iran did something first? Because Iran certainly getting mad. They're now saying, OK, we'll block the Strait of Hormuz. What was indicated to me is that they're going to intimidate. They're going to harass. They'll do anything in their power in order to get Iran so angry that they will shoot the first shot. Now, keep in mind that 40 percent of the world's oil supply on any day travels through the Strait of Hormuz. And the moment that there is a conflict with Iran, between Iran and anybody else, whether it be Syria or America or Israel or whatever it may be, the Strait of Hormuz is cut off. Now, let me go back a moment and clarify something. I have not been on your show for five months, Alex, so there are a number of things I haven't had an opportunity to say. The last time I appeared on your show, on June the 22nd of 2011, uh, I made the statement that crude oil prices were going to 150 to $200 a barrel. It has not happened yet. I went back to my elitist friend the latter part of June since I have last been on your show. I think it was maybe the 1st of July, and I called him my name, and I said, you're not helping my credibility very much. You told me that the price of crude oil was going from 150 to 200 dollars a barrel, and he said, uh, "Chaplain, that's exactly right." I said, "Well, it hasn't. Uh, what's the matter?" He said, "No, and I'm sorry to have to tell you, it's not going to during the summer and up into the fall." I said, "Well, you know what that's doing to my credibility." He said, "I'm sorry. That's just the way it is." Well, he was right, and so was uh, uh, From before. I have to be careful not to say his name because it's in my mind. I mean, they said when it was $60, it'd go to 150 Everybody laughed. It did do that in the exact time frame. Then you said now it's going to 40 It went below 40 Everybody laughed at you until it happened. So that's why I'm saying about 95% of what they've told you has been accurate. But they do change plans. I mean, if we expose this Iran plan enough, Iran may just keep taking it, and it, and it may not happen. Well, and the thing is, the reason why they didn't do this, and so I asked him, I said, well, why didn't you take the price of crude oil before the summer's over? That was the beginning of the summer. I said, why aren't you going to take the price to $150 a barrel like you told me it was going to? Alex, here is something that will startle you, and it could only come from the elite. It'll even startle you, I think. I found out that the reason they didn't let it keep going up is because too many Americans were waking up. Now, I know this sounds strange, but you remember when I lived with the elite, I came to the conclusion that there's only one thing on the face of this earth that they fear. They fear the masses waking up. There's only a few of them. There's a whole bunch of us. And they do not... Stay there. This is fascinating. You know why? Because I trust but verify. I have from Jim Tucker, Estelin, and one other source that do have Bilderberg sources. Tucker's got the hardcore ones, actual Bilderberg, not just an assistant. They. That's one of the main things they talked about. Back whenever they ran it up to 160, then they said, we're going to run it back down to 40 or so. They just said 60 in the meeting because it's it's making people too angry and they're waking up. They discuss Ron Paul in these meetings. They discuss the Patriot movement. So, I, you know, they are watching it. See, they're worried about the American people because we've got guns, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got another uh, major signpost coming in. We're trying to confirm it right now. I hope it's not true. I hoped it wasn't true the ATF shipped the guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment. Their now internal memorandums have been made public. They did. It was all set up. Uh, I wish Corzine wouldn't have stolen the $3 billion, but now he just says he doesn't know where it is, and that's the end of it.
Uh, I wish that they hadn't passed the NDAA saying they can arrest citizens for no reason and put you in a black hole and use the army. I wish that the Stars and Stripes magazine didn't say that three years ago. But they are getting ready for it. Oath Keepers has the report. It's going up on Infowars.com right now. Oath Keepers receives tip of National Guard unit stand down, refusing to answer questionnaire. We know these have been asked in the past, asking if they would use lethal force against the American people. They reportedly dropped their uh, arms before taking part in the exercise, which I've, I've been in drills where they practice taking on the American people, regular Army and Marines and ROTC. I've never seen guard. Well, I, I saw guard and gun confiscation drill in Iowa. That's right. Um, but uh, they reportedly dropped their firearms and walked off and said, we're not even we're not taking the questionnaire and we're not taking part in this exercise. And Stuart Rhodes is totally confirming it right now, but it, it looks like it's coming from a good source. One of the, uh, so we're going to uh, just it's this, this government is so criminal. Lindsay, it's a short segment going right back to you. OK, uh, when we went up to the break, you were bringing up the uh, point uh, of the fact that they're concerned about the American people. Uh, if they raise uh, the uh, gasoline prices too much, and I've gotten that from Bilderberg uh, as well previously. Please continue. For those of you who have just turned in, tuned in to the Alex Jones Show on Genesis, uh, may I say that a number of years ago, the reason I know this material is because I was invited to be the chaplain of the elite of the world for a three-year period. I kept in touch with some of those people who are now in their 70s and 80s, and they have personally given me this information is the only way I have any access to it. And, Alex, you're exactly right. They even talk about you, by the way, in those uh, meetings, Alex. Um, I could tell you some things. I will off the air someday. But uh, they they took the price of gasoline up. They saw that to, to fill up an SUV, it cost $100. Too many people were waking up. And it, it kind of hurt my credibility a little bit. When he told me, he said, well, chaplain, I'm sorry, but you'll just have to take it. Now, I'll tell you this, though. It is going to go up to 150 to $200 a barrel, and when it does, it is going to take place literally overnight. They will do it at a point that will be most unexpected. Why, please, why do they not want war with Iran till September, October of 2012? There's a reason why. Our president, now, our president, President Barack Hussein Obama, Mr. Obama is in trouble. Uh, he's their man. He's doing everything that they want done, even though, you know, earlier they said McCain was their man. But they've gotten Obama in line with everything they wanted to do with him. And now he's in trouble. The economy is in trouble. The unemployment rate is horrifying. People are mad as can be. They must find a way to get him back in office. Now, do you realize that the election is in November of 2012? September or October, how close are you to it? You undoubtedly know from history, if you're a history student, no sitting president has ever lost an election in a time of a declared war or an emergency. October surprise. That's exactly what they want, and they're doing it intentionally. Well, that makes yeah. sense. It's always hiding in plain view. They want an October surprise for Obama, who will look tough, and, and the neocons have said, strike Iran, you'll be reelected. He strikes two months before. Then we go into the Great Depression. It's the Iranians' fault. Yes, I'm going to stick my neck way, way out. We will not have war with Iran this month or next month, even though our warships are all the way over there. Russia is mad as can be. Uh, you've got a problem because of uh, Syria. It is not going to happen if they have their way until later up into 2012. Folks, please, 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 I beg you, don't let your guard down. Don't stop making preparation. It is going to happen. Just because I've said it's not going to happen this month or next, or the elite don't want it this month or next, you have a window of opportunity right now to get that storage food and water in your house to make your preparations and do what you're going to do. You have the greatest opportunity imaginable while the dollar is still high before it crashes, and it is going to crash. Their time schedule is still the end of 2012 for the demise of the American dollar, and it'll all take place around this whole situation. We've just got two statements. Number one, a Iran war is not going to take place right now if the elite have their way. It is going to take place next year. It will happen. They are ready. For three years, I've been telling you, it would not happen because Mr. Fromm said that before he died. It's changed now. They're ready to bring it on. Secondly, the crash, the financial crash. 
both of the euro and the American dollar is not going to take place this month, nor next month, nor the next month. And when we come back to the next sector, I'll tell section, I'll tell you why. Okay, you're right. It is the next sector. It, it is the next sector in the info war. Another bombing run in the info war. Straight ahead with Lindsey Williams. I'm Alex Jones, GCNlive.com. Well, quickly, let me finish up with Iran. This is so important. I'm so startled over what I heard a week ago. Russia, for the first time since the Cold War, is flexing its muscles. This is the first time that it has ever sent its warships, and they've sent them right over there by Syria. They cannot move them. They, they cannot take them back home. Russia is in a Russian roulette standoff. If they do, they've lost their credibility totally. Mr. Putin is just up for election. They, they cannot move them. America, uh, our president, he's in such, so much trouble, he can't pull our warships out. This is a standoff that is horrifying right around Syria. Uh, China has just made a statement that they will come to the, to the aid of Iran if any problems take place. Iran has said we will come to the aid of Syria if any NATO forces go in. Folks, you don't have the slightest idea. I almost stay awake at night. I, I had some dreams about this last night. scared the daylights out of me. They were just because I'm so fearful knowing what's taking place over there. No, everybody's having, anybody with the discernment's having the dreams right now, Lindsay. You notice in the last three years, all the saber rattling, you didn't hear China and Russia weighing in. Now they're deploying troops. They're moving ships in. They're deploying their nukes. They're threatening Hillary Clinton. I mean, they know this is entering the danger zone. Can you imagine Walmart or Target without a single product on its shelves marked made in China? Folks, you are going to see it. Mr. Fromm told me this before he ever passed away. He said, watch China, and he told me some of the things that were going yeah, to happen. Yeah, he said, first, the Middle East is going to be in turmoil and revolution staged, but that's a diversion. Watch China. But, but, but Watch China. Let's Don't continue here. Let's continue here, though, with, with the Iran situation and, and then the other five points. Let's go through them. Okay, the five points. First of all, uh, number one, please jot this down on your paper. The elite have intentionally not allowed the European Union euro to crash. They, the American dollar should have long since have gone with a $15 trillion indebtedness and the Federal Reserve buying back our T-bills. Fromm said before he died, he said the day that the Federal Reserve buys back its own its T-bills, he said it's all over for the American dollar. Now I'm finding out from my elitist friends that they are intentionally holding off the crash. It will not take place this month. It will not take place next month. It will not take place for a number of months. Don't, don't let your guard down. And while they are not letting it happen, here it is. The elite wish to create massive, like you have never seen before, massive debt before they allow the crash to take place so that when they do let it take place, they can step in and say, Greece, we own all of your paper. America, through the Federal Reserve, we hold your debt. They can step into every city, every county, every state in the United States of America. They'll say, California, after all, we bailed you out. We hold your paper. You don't have a chance. You have to accept our new world order and our new currency, never mind your constitution. Every bit of this, folks, is being done. You must not fall into the debt trap. They are intentionally holding off on the crash until later on up into 2012. Mark my words. I know most news letter writers have been saying it's going to take place next week, going to happen tomorrow, going to happen on 11-11, going to happen on 12-12. None of them. It, 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 it didn't happen the way any of them said. The elite said to me, it's going to create massive debt like the world has never seen so that the world will be in such a condition they can step in and say well, look, we have the answer to it all. Yeah, and it's a world government. They've already announced that as a solution. They want to milk and suck each country with a new bailout, always promising to fix it first. They've got a lot of squeezing and milking to do first. So I asked one of my financial friends here just the other day, I said, who in their right mind would possibly buy a single piece of Greek paper over in Europe? I said, there's no way they'll ever get paid back. He said, Chaplin, you don't understand. And I'll admit to you, but some of the things that these people have told me, I don't understand. He said, Chaplin, you don't understand. He said, the elite are the ones that are buying the Greek paper. I said, but why? They'll never get paid back. He said, Chaplin, come on. He said, get with it. He said, no, they won't get paid back. He said, that's what we want. I said, what are you talking about? He said, we can step in to Greek, France, Italy. I don't care what those countries.
filters are over there, every one of them. They're buying it with devalued fiat dollars anyways and loan yeah. guarantees, so they buy it with fiat Ponzi. They took the country down by setting them up in a fiat Ponzi, and then they get all the real stuff for nothing. That's exactly right, Alex. You hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what he said. He said, Chaplin, whenever we allow the euro to crash, oh, by the way, whenever, the euro, whenever you see the euro crash, you've got a maximum of three weeks. And if you don't get out a paper of every kind, your 401k, your IRA, your Federal Reserve note, any paper that you're in, within, you've got to get out of it within three weeks or you've lost it after you see the euro crash. I'm just giving you a time frame that you work. Now, he told you three weeks, but once everybody starts rushing, they're going to try to shut it down even quicker than that. Uh, they, and want, they, they, they want to buy every bit of the debt of all of these countries over there. They know they'll never get paid back. Then they can step in when they finally allow the crash to take place and they can say, you don't have a chance. You've got to accept our new world order. You don't have your own currency. We have a new currency backed by gold and silver. Oh, please, folks, don't sell your gold and silver. It's going gold going to 3000 plus an ounce, and that's that. Well, let's go through everything he told you then. Let, I mean, go through it specifically. Go ahead. Massive debt before they allow the crash. Take advantage of the window of opportunity to make all your preparations. Secondly, please listen to this one as carefully as you can. By the end of 2012, all private fortunes will be lost that are secured with paper. They already have it planned. Now, keep in mind, during the 1929 and 1933 depressions, there were people who made great fortunes. They knew it was coming. They knew it was going to happen. Lehman Brothers is not going, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the uh, Goldman Sachs is not going to lose one single penny in this depression. They know, it's, they know what to do. They've no, they're all rushing into farmland, commodities, uh, and uh, gun companies, uh, and uh, food. Yeah, by the end of 2012, all private fortunes will be lost that are secured with paper. Please, please, please hear this statement. IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, if it is, Mr. Fromm said three years ago, Chaplin, if it's written on a piece of paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. You must immediately, folks, secure your assets. You've got to get it into tangible. Did he say anything about MF Global? Uh, no, he did not. I haven't gotten on that subject. I wish I had, but I did not. Uh, but, yeah, I, they're going to see, oh, by the way, there are many, many, many MF Globals working out there in the shadows that have not taken place yet. You haven't seen anything. They're going to bring about the loss of, please let me say it again, by the end of 2012, all private fortunes will be lost that are not secured by paper. And you've got to get into, okay, now the next one. Welfare recipients. Oh, this, this cover, they covered so many things with me about five or six months ago. It scared the daylights out of me. Welfare recipients, food stamps, people who are getting them, those who are on Social Security. You will not, are you listening, folks? You will not have your checks cut off. You will continue to get them. You'll get them right on through 2012 and probably up through 2013, and you will continue to get them, and I'm going to give you the date when you'll quit getting them. They know that the day that the food stamp recipients, the food and the welfare recipients and the Social Security people are cut off, that our cities will burn. They want the new world order brought in their way, and they will continue to give you your checks until the day that the American government defaults on its national debt. And I'm saying it. I said it before. I gave it on Alex Jones' show. I think last time I was here, the national debt will be defaulted on, not necessarily this year nor next it may take a few years. They want to do everything else first in the way of loss. Of, uh, They're going to bring everything down before they then do that. But but they will. They are freezing cola. So you still get the check. It just doesn't buy as much. It won't buy as much. And I have had some innovations, which I can't talk about today, maybe after the first of the year, as to some time frame and what will be happening to the American dollar because Mr. they said to me that the American dollar will be dead by the end of 2012, the next one very quick because I know we're giving out of time here. If you own a farm and it's paid for, if you own a house, oops, are you beginning to realize why it scared the daylights out of me when I got all this? And are you understanding 
why you won't find this in any newsletter. You haven't heard anybody talk about this one, I guarantee you. If you own a farm and it's paid for, you own a house and it's paid for, you have a business and you've been wise enough not to get a small business loan, you must immediately go and get enough gold and silver to pay your taxes for three to five years. If the elite cannot confiscate your property because you can't pay your mortgage, and they will, they'll confiscate that house if there's a mortgage on it, that boat, the, 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 and they'll let whatever. millions of houses sit empty just because that's what they want to do. They're already doing it. I mean, they, they want to wreck things. They say they want to wreck things. Yeah, they want to turn around and rent it back to you. And the, uh, uh, the Federal Reserve is nothing but the elite. It is not federal. No, no, you're right. Reserve. Just like the Great Depression, that they engineered the whole thing. That was declassified. They're going to want to. You, you, so you've got to be ready for up to five years to pay for everything. You're going to have to be able to pay those taxes down the line, even though the states and the counties have been bailed out by the Federal Reserve, and they will control them and own them at that point. But if you can't pay your taxes, this will be the, the next method that they will use to confiscate and get everything that is left. You must go and get enough gold and silver, which you say, wait a minute, the county and the state, they won't accept gold and silver for, for you cash it in for whatever the paper currency is for what, yeah cash it in for whatever the currency is that they issue at that time and you are not going to lose one thing you pay seventeen hundred dollars for an ounce of gold right now it'll be worth three and four I'm, I'm predicting at least three because you have to back the world currency with it and you'll be able to go and pay your taxes keep your farm you can live a successful life under the new world order program if you know what to do right now and you take the time to do it alex knowledge is power people perish for lack of knowledge i know i've known this information and it's been nothing but a boon to myself and the listeners when gold was 260 bucks we told them now it's 1700 1800 and they can move it up and down but if they're devaluing currencies worldwide there's only a matter of time till it goes up uh incredible so uh, t tell us the rest of what they told you on the other side uh, lindsey williams is our guest amazing information today and Tonight on the Nightly News, 7 o'clock. You're not going to want to miss that. Penso que un sueño para sido no volverá más. E me pintaba las manos y la cara de azul. We've been so jam-packed with news. I haven't gotten to a lot of calls the last few days, but I, I'm, I'm going to tomorrow. And then on Sunday, 4 to 6. Uh, but Wow. I wish this stuff wasn't true. I wish this wasn't happening. I mean, they're admitting a bank of the world, world government run by Goldman Sachs, you'll pay your taxes to when they're the ones engaged in all the fraud. And I know Lindsey Williams has these sources. We have some similar ones through our connections that basically we get the same information. But uh, Lindsey knows these guys well, well, the one that's alive now and can really you know get a lot of stuff out of them. Uh, and uh, it's it's disgusting that it's gotten to this point. But this is their plan, and I've seen them do it in third world countries. I've interviewed their economic hitmen like John Perkins. A lot of this stuff's been declassified. I've read State Department training uh, manuals. That's what Tragedy and Hope is. And it's almost a thousand pages, or is it over a thousand with a bibliography? Um, that was only for government people to read, but the plates got out and it got printed. And the government admits it's it's there. And so here here's an eleven hundred page book or whatever. I guess yeah, some versions of the bibliography. You know, here it is, and uh, this is this is what we're doing, so they can understand. Well, wait, the banks run communism and fascism, and uh, again, it's complex. But once you see it, it's like, well, that makes total sense. They get everybody in fake debt, and then get them in more fake debt for more fiat garbage, and then they get all the real assets. This is how they operate. It's the power of saying, "I control the money," as Lord Rothschild said. Uh, Lindsay, other points that he made to you. When you talked to him seven days ago, other other things he uh, raised. Yes, I've only given three. The elite have a think tank. And, and I say this with uh, respect for all of my pastor friends. In some instances, the elite know more than most preachers do. Why did things not take place in the year 2000? There's a reason why. Why are things not taking place until the year 2012? 
that now there's a reason why, and they have thought this through. And when I found this out, I was so startled. I went to my scriptures. I began to look every way I could, and I found out that the Bible is in perfect agreement with what these people are thinking is going to happen in 2012. There are going to be some divine manifestations. I did not say divine intervention. I said divine manifestations in 2012. I give them all in our new series, 2012, the beginning of the end. Also, one other thing, and I know we've got seconds here, so I'm going to give us one more. One of the agendas of the elite in 2012 is such a simple word, but it is so profound it's almost unbelievable. It's the word fear, F-E-F-E-A-R, fear. There has not been a single terrorist attack since 9-11, yet they've got you scared to death. You go to the airports, and they make you think you're a criminal. You're shaking your shoes as you give them your identification. You go to the courthouse, and you, don't, you take off everything that's metal from beginning to end. Then they gave you L&E and in Planet X, and every bit of it was a method of instilling fear. And so I contacted two of my medical friends. I mean, one of them you'd recognize him immediately because he has a nationwide uh, radio show every week. Uh, on medicine, and I said, "What does fear do when it's uh, in, when the human body is object uh, is put in the uh, presence of fear?" And he said, "Chaplain, very simple. It, it shuts off the brain." I said, "Oh my gracious, that's exactly what they're doing, folks. Do not allow yourself to fall into the trap of the agenda of the elite. And one of their agendas is to make you scared to death. Quit looking behind bushes. Sleep well at night." Know the issues that you're hearing it on Alex Jones' show from week to week, and then take action and do something about it. Well, Lindsay, there's one more point you got to make. So let's. Can you do five minutes of overdrive, or do you have to go? Oh, I'm in no hurry, Alex. I'll stay with you as long as you want. All right. Well, the, the main transmission ends now. We. Back. All right, it's a little overdrive here, a little addendum with Lindsey Williams. We'll obviously have to get back up next week if we can do it to flesh more of this out and take calls. I want to point out there's been another shooting, at least two shot hours ago at Virginia Tech, same place where they had shooting before. A lot of suspicious stuff in the last one. We'll see what's happening here. You know, as Blagojevich gets 14 years in prison, when compared to the rest of the Obama mafia, he's nothing, Corzine and others. Just incredible. Uh, that that happened, uh, but uh, I certainly won't cry my milk at night about it. But, Lindsay, there was one other point you were going to get to, and then anything else he told you seven days ago? Paper, can you afford to lose it? Any paper you've got, anything that you've got in the way of assets that's in paper, if you can't afford to lose it, you better get out of it immediately. There is going to be a financial crash, but it'll take place down the line when you least expect it. Same thing with Iran. When you least expect it, you're going to have gasoline at the gas pump, 8 9 and $10 a gallon, and it'll probably go there overnight when the conflict starts with Iran. They will take the price where they want it to go. Many of you remember that about nine months ago, I went to them after the East Egyptian conflict, and I said to my elitist friend, what in this world are you doing? I said, you told me it wasn't going to be with Iran, but there would be a conflict in the Middle East. And he said, yeah. And I said, but what are you doing over here? Why is this happening? And he gave me, and I appeared on your show and told it, Alex, and it startled you. Uh, I said, everything that they're going to do in the Middle East, and have you noticed that each nation has been taken in the exact order that I gave it right here? You'll find it in the archives of the Alex Jones Show, not because I gave it, but because my latest friend gave it to me. It, first of all, was, uh, there was Egypt, and then it went down to Gaddafi, and then for each one of these nations, one after the other, everything has happened exactly as they said. Egypt, Libya, Kuwait, Yemen, and now they're right down to Syria. And next will be Saudi Arabia, even though most people and most newsletter writers don't think there's going to be a crisis there. It will happen. They're getting the Bakken field of North and South Dakota and Montana ready. The, you must see the largest oil rig that has ever been produced on the face of the earth uh, you'll see it in our new presentation, 2012, the beginning of the end. It's on Gull Island. They're going down eight miles. They know that there's the mother lobe of all oil fields there, and it'll be brought in just about the time that the Middle East situation gets so hot that they produce it from America's own oil fields at 150 to 200 dollars a barrel. If you can even get it at the gas pump, and by that time. 
uh, you'll be begging for gasoline. You'll be begging for the new world currency. You'll be begging for the new world order. Okay, one thing, Alex, that I do need to touch on, though, that I just barely touched on the earlier segment. I was so fascinated when I found out what their think tank has found out. 2012, they know, the elite know good and well, that in 2012, there's going to be some things take place that they have never seen take place on the face of the earth before. Uh, and when I was given this, I had to go do some studying on my own, even though for many, many years I have tried to give out the Word of God the best I could. Why didn't things happen in the year 2000? They were supposed to have. I and nearly every other Christian that I know of thought that something was going to happen on the year 2000, and it didn't. Nothing took place. And I must admit to you, I was a little disappointed. I'm not talking about the coming of Jesus Christ. That is not my subject matter here at all. I'm talking about some sort of divine manifestation, intervention, uh, something taking place. Nothing happened in the year 2000. It took the elite to find out why. 2012, now please let me give it to you quickly if I can, from the, in, in the book of, in the Old Testament, I tell you what, Lindsay, let's do this. The show's absolutely over. Can you come on at 1130 Central tomorrow? Be more than happy to. Uh, Jaron, are we open at 1130 tomorrow on the show? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll, we will call you at 1130 and do 30 minutes on the Devil's Messiah and this information we didn't get to tomorrow, Lindsay. I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, that's it for this broadcast. It'll go back into rebroadcast with the FEMA camp and ATF News. Uh, that's uh, coming up uh, after this uh, break uh, in the retransmission. Lindsay, we'll talk to you tomorrow at 11.30 Central, okay? Thank you, Alex. Lord bless. Have a good day. All right, folks. See you tonight, 7 o'clock with Key Info.